Forgotten Waters has three to seven pirates searching the seas together for treasure, excitement, and to fulfill story goals. This is an app-based game, mostly played inside a storybook. To avoid spoilers, I'll focus on the first page of the first adventure. Players control their own pirate and have one or more specific roles. Bosun, first mate, cooper, gunner, quartermaster, or lookout. These rules just mean you modify slash check against numbers at times and be asked to make an occasional in-game decision, so don't worry about being overwhelmed during the actual game. You track where your group ship sails on a seaboard with a variety of location tiles. Tiles and locations are numbered. Type the number into the app. The bosun tracks the condition of your hull, the first mate tracks discontent and crew numbers, the cooper tracks supplies, the lookout tracks the objective's threat level, the quartermaster tracks infamy, turn order for the most part, and the gunner handles the cannons. These are pretty straightforward and specific information will be provided by the app. This is your player sheet. When you increase a bottom skill and scratch out a star, fill in a constellation circle. You may collect a constellation event token, exclamation point, for your hard work. I want to avoid spoiling the fun, so I'll keep this simple. Fill out a Mad Libs Q&A at the top of page 2. At the bottom of page 2, read your backstory to everyone before beginning the game, filling in the gaps based on what you wrote. At times, the app tells you to read the next constellation event story on page 3 if any tokens were earned. These advance your personal story and often provide rewards. The more constellation events you unlock, the better your final story on the back page will be. Players start with the treasure and will gain and lose more throughout the game. Some can be discarded for a bonus, some boost your skills during checks, and so on. There are different cards, including story cards that specifically tie to game events, allies, and more. That all sounds like a lot, but the game is simple. The player with the highest infamy starts the app's timer, and players, without cheating to read the right-hand side of the page, plays their pirate standy. The icons give clues about what might happen. Red actions are mandatory, green actions can support multiple pirates, and blue can only support a single pirate. Once you've all gone, resolve from top to bottom, then resolve the round end entry in the app. You may sail onto a location tile with a crosswords event. A specific player must choose an option that will shape the map and events. For the most part, you just resolve a page, move to the next tile, and continue until the story completes, or you lose. There are a few ways to win and lose, but I'll leave that up to you to discover. One last thing. The adventures are broken up into parts, and the app will give you instructions on how to prepare for the next session or to start from a previous one. If you need to save and quit before one of these checkpoints, just fill in the information on the back of the ship scribe sheet, or take a bunch of photos and notes. Whatever works. Choose and resolve actions, unravel the story's secrets, and grow to be a legendary pirate. That's Forgotten Waters. Forgotten Waters setup is not quick. You have to prepare the boards, mats, player areas, and so on. If you're like us and split each adventure into halves, you'll have twice the setup and takedown. With that said, the rounds have timers and you can't see and do everything. Luck and player choices make sure of that. Our experience, and remember that we did each adventure in two parts, was around two hours per half. Forgotten Waters is a table hog. Even with just the three of us, we needed about three and a half feet by four feet. The app handles the majority of reading, and game math is grade two or three-ish. You need to be able to cooperate and be extremely quick on your feet. I also think that the theme will be a bit much for most young gamers. If your 10, 11 year old can handle Pirates of the Caribbean, they should be fine. Otherwise, wait until they're a little older. We had fun with this with only three players, but it would have been better with more. At three players, the player with the highest infamy does use the skeleton pirate as an extra character, so three player games are actually four player games. With higher play counts, infamy would have played a bigger role. Planning actions would have filled up, there's another person to make crossers choices, share stories at the table, and so on. Again, totally fun with three, but... In Forgotten Waters' third scenario, Mom was Rich Aunt Maud, Dad was TikTok Mackie, 
and I was Firebug Otis. We were confident that we could solve the mystery, so we sailed to an island, and everything went wrong. Again, I want to avoid spoilers, but let's put it this way. We barely survived, and then before we could catch our breath, had to deal with another huge problem. Absolutely perfect luck on all four rolls would give us a narrow win, and we'd lose if even two weren't perfect. Mom had an item that helped us. Dad flew through six rerolls and got it on the last one. I needed an 11 or 12 to win. Fail, fail, fail. I started yelling at my dice. Come on, give me what I need. <laughs> on my A3 roll, 11. We all breathed for the first time in what seemed like 15 minutes and then put our heads down laughing. So good. There's a ton of replayability in Forgotten Waters. You have a whole pile of different pirates and five scenarios, plus we've heard Plat Out Games are working on adding a sixth to download. Okay, that's cool, but the best part is how a story page can change depending on not only that adventure, but where it pops up during an adventure. You could go to a page a handful of times, and even though the actions are the same, the results and or story aspects can change quite a lot. The app is fantastic. The voice actors and background sounds capture the theme, although the volume isn't always even, as some characters are hard to understand. I really like the timer, the app assisted setup and safe system are brilliant, and it's easy to use too. Oh, and there's a history where you can go back and see older entries. Genius! The game is really pretty. The art is very colorful and thematic. There's a lot of diversity in the character standees and their backstories. This game is very funny. Not because of the player interaction, but the actual writing had us laughing quite often. It's silly humor, so if that's not your thing, you might want to think twice about this. There is a lot of luck. A game could end without any fault of your own. You're here for the experience. For some, that's not enjoyable. Thankfully, there's plenty of mitigation thanks to rerolls, treasures, story cards, pirate pals, character ability upgrades, and so on. I really like how your captain's story gets revealed as you play, and same for the playable characters. The ability differences don't feel as different as I'd like, but the personal stories make up for it. This game is better suited for a convention or party than family game night, but the box isn't something you can just toss into a backpack. Also, because of the app, it might be hard to hear in a busy space. If Chronicles of Crime's theme was too intense for you, or if Stuffed Fables' gameplay was too simplistic, Forgotten Waters might be exactly what you were looking for. It really is like Pirates of the Caribbean, the board game, in that there's looting, mayhem, and barrels of rum, but it's all wrapped up in a highly replayable co-op that does not take itself too seriously.